and there she is, the brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro in silver, powered by the M1 Max chip. Hey everyone, it's Jamie and welcome. Now, you're certainly not watching this on launch day because what I had to go through to get this thing on launch day, it's a heck of a story. If you would like to hear about it, let me know down in the comment section, but I didn't manage to acquire one on launch day. Here it is today. I did manage to order one right after the event, about 20 minutes after the event. There's a lot of specs to go through, so it did take me a little bit of a time. Long story short, directly after that Apple event, the sales went live, so it was really, really unexpected so I had to wrap my mind around all these specs all of this information that Apple just unleashed on us so it took me a little bit to decide shipping was slightly delayed by the time I made up my mind but we're here and I got one now the new macro pros come in this new 14 inch size as well as that classic 16 inch size as well as those two standard colorways of silver as well as space gray it's what's on the inside that makes it super difficult to decide now the new 14 inch MacBook Pro starts off with the M1 Pro chip that starts off with 16 gigabytes of unified memory all the way up to the M1 Max, which has 64 gigabytes of memory. You could also configure the CPU, the GPU, as well as how much memory you would like. So there are so many selections to choose from this time around. But what is awesome, just like the new iPhone 13s, is that you don't need to compromise by getting the bigger size to get the better features and performance. Now, previously, up until this summer, I did have the 16-inch MacBook Pro, but that thing was just so large and cumbersome to lug around. So I just simply vowed just to invest in a desktop if I didn't need more power, more performance, because to me, laptops are really about portability and convenience. And luckily, I did not have to compromise with a 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. But as mentioned, you'll be able to select from three different unified memory selections. You got the 16, 32, as well as the 64. And then there's a couple GPU selections as well. And then finally, you could also select up to eight terabytes on both machines, eight terabytes of SSD memory, but let me tell you, it's gonna cost you. So yeah, there's certainly a lot to choose from, and it definitely took me way too long to decide, because then shipping times started to get delayed, but fortunately, there was some in stock in the local Apple store. It did take a couple trips, but we managed to get one. So it definitely has a little bit more heft than the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, and I'm gonna guess that's because of all these additional ports, as well as additional fan because this guy has two cooling fans in on the inside but let's go ahead and take a look at these ports now along the left we do have the new magsafe charging port and let's go ahead and test that open that up uh, there's some origami magic so if you're old like me you'll remember that the old magsafe charger was actually attached to the power brick and my cat actually ended up eating a couple of those and that was a very costly cord but fortunately this is not just a detachable this time it's now braided so that is super great now let's check these magnets. Let's see how strong and sturdy they are. So if you're old like me, you'll remember MagSafe. If you're one of those young kids watching this video, hey. Uh, so MagSafe is just a magnetic charging port. So if someone does end up tripping over your cord, it'll just unplug and not take your computer with you while still providing very fast charging speeds. So that is MagSafe right there. But fortunately enough, you are still able to charge via USB-C. Now I do have more USB-Cs laying around because everything charges by via USB-C, except the iPhone, of course. But fortunately, you could just plug, use any charger. So I don't see myself using MagSafe too often. You do get faster charging speeds via MagSafe, depending on your charging brick, but there you go. Uh, you do have an upgraded headphone jack, and then along the right side, you do have an HDMI port and an SD card slot, neither of which I use. Um, my Nokian camera actually uses Sony XQD cards, which are tougher, faster, all of those things. So I still need a dongle for that, and I'm okay with it. I'm fine. But what I really like is that there's a USB-C along the right side. Now the M1 Pro does not have anything on the right side. So if you're at a coffee shop or something, you kind of have to run the, the cord around, and that's a little annoying, um, being a little net picky there. But I do like having a charging port on the left as well as the right. It's just more of a convenience thing. Uh, if you're with me, comment down below. I like to charge on the right. Hey. 
But for a quick size comparison, this is not a comparison video, but for size comparison, let's just look at the 13 and a half inch Surface Laptop 4 compared to the 14 inch. Ooh, it's about the same size, it's just a little bigger and you do get that whole half an inch of real estate. And then of course you have the 13 inch MacBook uh, along there. How do these guys look against each other? Okay, 13 inches obviously smaller. And then if we were to look at thickness, how is this coming out on camera? camera, Ivy, the new 14 inch MacBook Pro, thicker. I do love that wedge design of the Surface Laptop, very similar to the MacBook Air. And then you have the more squared shape of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So there you go, there's a thickness comparison as well as height comparison, uh, cause they did add the extra inch of screen real estate in the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And they also changed the screen ratio of the screen. But speaking of screen, let's get right to that on next. Of course, what sold me right away was this larger screen. You get this larger display with only a slightly larger footprint, these ultra thin bezels, and of course, it's the liquid retina XDR display with 120 hertz of pro motion. So this is gonna be the same display that you'll find on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro from this year and the same refresh rates that were just added to the iPhone 13 Pro lineup. But I'll be honest, aside from the screen brightness, which gets from 1,000 to 1,600 nits, I really don't notice too much of a difference. The M1 MacBook Pro, and again, although this is not a comparison, gets up to only 100 nits of brightness. So this is double the brightness. And I do notice that big jump on the iPhone 13 lineup. So that's where I do notice it, and that's where I think I'll really benefit if I'm working outside or any harsh lighting conditions. I should still be able to view whatever it is I'm working on. Now, aside from the speakers and the mics, the biggest noticeable change you'll probably notice is in the web so if you are coming from any older MacBook, that likely has 720p, but this guy here comes equipped with a 1080p webcam. And as I have said before, I really do like to look my best. So typically I do use a 4K Logitech webcam, which I absolutely love, but hopefully now I could leave that at home and still not look all grainy and still look nice and sharp, again, regardless of the lighting conditions of where I'm in. So hopefully now I could just solely rely on the webcam that is found here on the 14 inch Mac. MacBook Pro. But moving right on down from the screen, and yes, I am not giving that notch any attention, we have the same magical trackpad, which is really superior to anything else. Uh, the keyboard is a little different, so now the tray is all black versus black and silver. You have no touch bar, so you have full function keys. I personally, I, I like the touch bar. I know it's a little bit of a gimmick, but I really did like swiping around and choosing my emojis, but you do have a dedicated emoji button right along the left-hand corner. And then the keys themselves, they feel okay. Uh, they're definitely not shallow whatsoever. And they don't give that same clicky clacking sound as I get on my normal Magic Keyboard. I personally prefer the easier press, which is what I used to find on the butterfly keyboard. I know I'm not on the majority there, but that's why I also like the traditional Magic Keyboard. You get the little click clack, the buttons go down nice and smooth. This one is a little firmer. You do have a little bit more of a press as you're typing, but I'm sure you'll adjust like any other keyboard. But aside from the build and the cosmetics, the true improvements lie within the internals. And, and if you don't need all the power, I think you will be more than happy with a MacBook Air or the 13 inch MacBook Pro if you do like the gimmick of the touch bar. Because when I'm holding this one here, I know I will miss it. So the size, the weight, the form. This guy here is only a half a pound heavier. So we have three pounds for the 13 inch and then you 13 and a half pounds for the 14 inch, even though it's a lot thicker. So there is a weight difference, but not as substantial as you would think given the girth. One thing that I might end up noticing is the battery life. So the battery life actually on the 13 Pro is longer by about three hours than the 14 inch. Why, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's the power of this liquid retina XDR display, but still the battery life should still be amazing since it's still using the efficiency cooling systems of the M1. So yeah, I think those are a lot of the major points when it comes to the 14 inch, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, just offhand. Again, this is a very first look, uh, but one thing when I'm looking at the camera here is that the Apple logo for this one is entirely black versus this one has a silver shiny finish to it. So just notice that, so I'd figure I'd throw it out there if you're curious. This one's full black and this one has a shiny tint to it. And typically I really don't do any follow-up videos. Unless you want one, let me know down in the 
comment section or just message me on Instagram or Twitter. We're going to have a conversation there. But this is where I'm going to leave it. It's been a long day and I'm ready to use this guy. I'm ready to edit this video. And I've never been more excited to edit a video. So thank you for making it all the way to the end of this one. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, guys, I'll see you.